food with staples, hair, insects, mold, food left out to get cold. This is how students, teachers, and community members have described food served at Concordia. Aramark, the multinational food service provider that is responsible for these conditions, has been awarded another contract for Concordia to be the main food service provider on campus. For years, students and faculty members at Concordia have been pushing for the university to replace Aramark with a food provider focused on healthy, local food and meaningful work for people instead of profits for investors. Aramark's new contract will last five years with a possible two-year extension. The company, which also works with resorts, hospitals, and prisons, will provide food in residence buildings and in Concordia buildings, including the Green Beat in the Hall building and the cafe in the Communications and Journalism building at the Loyola campus. Eric Chevrier, a professor at Concordia and chair of the Concordia Food Coalition, has been pushing for a community-led system for more than a decade. I, I actually haven't eaten at Airmark, but I do have students that are in residence and students that are in different courses of mine that uh, we actually discuss food. So I've seen pictures from students and some of it is quite appalling. Students have reported other things like food poisoning. So I think that the for-profit model and these big kind of contracts actually really don't provide the best opportunities for getting good quality food. Aramark may have a bad reputation at Concordia, but their reputational issues extend far beyond campus critiques. Prisoners have hosted multiple strikes against the corporation for the condition of Aramark food at prisons in New York and Ohio. Maggots were found in meals, along with undercooked chicken. Practices by Aramark employees have also been called out, including staff allegedly sexually harassing inmates. Things aren't much better for Aramark employees. In 2017, Aramark employees working at York University in Toronto went on strike. Workers were making $12.21 per hour. Workers were also being denied sick leave, requiring medical certificates instead of doctor's notes. These would cost workers making barely more than minimum wage at the time between $70 and $90. Workers of color identified racist treatment. Aramark managers denied Muslim workers promotions due to their religion and avoided hiring black workers in some areas of the university. According to allegations, Managers called employees by racist nicknames, insulted, and mocked them. Since the early 2000s, Concordia University has relied on multinationals to run the food system, usually one of three corporations, including Aramark, Chartwells, and Sodexo Marriott. Aramark has been in charge of Concordia's food system since 2015, controlling everything from food plans in student residences to on-campus concessions, such as the Tim Hortons in the library building, the Starbucks outside of the tunnel, and the food kiosk in the CJ building at Loyola. Shiloh Wolf has been researching Concordia's food system and community-led models in other Canadian universities. For per year, for two semesters, it's uh, about five thousand dollars. It's difficult to um, adjust for the cost of living in each province because, again, food is is very place-based, so it's important to keep that in mind. And Diversity Food Service um, meal plan is actually they're one of the lowest priced. The university makes their decision through a request for proposal proposal process, also known as an RFP. This is where businesses can bid on the contract. Concordia University spokesperson Venina Mistracci told CUTV that the university is a public institution and has to use a request for proposals process to select suppliers when the contract is over $100,000. Mistracci explained that the food services contract represents 3,000 meals a day, including the dining halls for residences, which serve meals three times a day, seven days a week. Mistracci said that Aramark won the contract based on both quality and price. She said the new contract with Aramark is different than the last, as it goes further in meeting the university's local purchasing and sustainability targets. More plant-based meals will be offered in residences and across campus, and annual training courses for culinary staff in plant-based meal preparation will be held. Businesses need to have at least three years of experience in providing food services, have managed a food services contract of at least $1 million in annual sales volume, and have a minimum of $3.5 million in annual sales revenues. The annual sales revenues is the most difficult requirement for community-led systems to meet. 
The University of Winnipeg and the University of British Columbia's Okanagan campus both have community-led systems. Because we're a social enterprise owned by two not-for-profits, those two not-for-profits basically have given up the profit expectation on their investment. And instead, what they ask us to do is pay them back with a social return on their investment. And so what we do is we cook as much as we possibly can from scratch. We procure as locally as possible, um, as sustainably as possible. And when we look at sustainability, what we mean is not only environmentally sustainably, but also labor. The creation of the diversity food services at the University of Winnipeg was really spurred because of a clear insight in the needs of the community that there be more socially, environmentally, economically just and accessible services, especially labor. Maestrachi told CUTV that the university approached non-for-profit organizations such as Coopsco and Diversity Food Services, as well as local Quebec companies such as La Liberté and Excelso, adding that it is of course up to them to decide to submit or not. Despite Concordia relying on multinational corporations to run their food systems since the early 2000s, there are many small community-led food systems on campus highlighting how community-led food systems can benefit the community. But small food systems are reliant on both local farmers and growing their own greens, alongside employing members of the community who know the space and the community that they're feeding. While corporations focus on profit, community-led systems are focused on people over profit. With profit that is made, then funneled back into the food, workers, and overall system. The Hive Cafe, which opened in 2014 by Concordia students, operates at both Loyola and Sir George William campus. The university does not consider the Hive as a business model to bid for an RFP. You know, it's within our mandate is to provide affordable food that's local, um, that is 70% organic, that is there and being governed in a democratic fashion as well. And this is very unique because of the cooperative model rather than like a corporation. <music> product that we're providing, um, it's made by students, it's grown by student organizations or local uh, groups, and it's, it's healthier, it's better. Uh, it comes from a place where the social dynamics, the, uh, you know, the socioeconomic system that is being garnered from that the cooperative model, the governance of everything. I think it says a lot more about the way that we run and function as an organization, rather than just like the food we provide. The Hive is not the only community-led food system at Concordia. Decades of student activism have established many non-profit providers that focus on healthy meals and local, equitable supply chains. In the early 2000s, the People's Potato was established, a popular soup kitchen offering vegan meals to the Concordia community. Campus regulars will recognize the long line of community members, Tupperware in hand, looping along the halls of the seventh floor hall building to access their free lunch. But it's not the only free service, with the high free lunch also being offered to the community at Loyola campus. The greenhouse, located on the top floor of the hall building, is also linked to the hive and the people's potato. Microgreens are also grown in the greenhouse to be used at the hive. Dominique Smith, the outreach and communications coordinator at the greenhouse, offers various greenhouse-related workshops for the community including how to grow your own seedlings. Corporations care is about profits. And this is one of the main distinctions with the social solidarity economy. And when you are going for the profits, and I have seen them closely, because I come from an agricultural town in, in Mexico, where like some of these corporations have come and take over the land, and they, they really mess it up. They really come with all these fertilizers and pesticides. It's, it's horrible. Like you, you don't, like you are eating chemicals. The, the veggies and fruits, they don't taste as good. So what is very interesting here in terms of distribution of power, in terms of distribution of wealth, is, is, is a way of challenging the current inequality in my point of view, but inequality not only about wealth, but inequality of participation in, in the economy. I don't really recommend anyone to 
step into the, the corporate food systems because uh, they are just uh, no carcinogenic, uh, no garbage food. And of course, the students may be stuffed today, but they may be suffering from illness tomorrow. And that part is never in the conversation. Lycon was a founding member of Burritoville, a community-led restaurant, which opened its doors in 2004, closing in 2016. Lycon says a community-led system could give students more independence. Concordia does provide a chance for students to get experience in running food operations. The university offers students the chance to cover 50% of the cost of creating a business plan for the CSU to explore the intricacies of running a food service organization in a university setting. If we are, have a reputation of being progressive, well, we should embrace it and take it to the next level. One of the slogans of this, the social solidarity economy is people over profit. When you just change that simple thing of putting people first, then the model change. Then what is important is not just to make money, but to make sure that we are satisfying some needs. And that's usually why a community-led solution is better. The folks that are there have an ownership over the business, we'll call it, uh, or the solution. And they're also, they can be more responsive to the community needs as those needs change. And there's just a, you know, there's a value and a wealth created from that because it's a reciprocal process. It's not just about a business providing a service and taking the money that they get in exchange for that service away from the community. Don't have the foundation to just switch overnight. But if you don't entertain, then it never happens.